Hey guys. So let's start with a little cleansing before we begin the actual reading. And as I cleanse, I want to remind you guys, there's still scammers in the comments. Some of them take my pictures and my name and try to pass themselves off, off as me. Remember that I will never be messaging and offering you free, re free readings. That's not the type of reader I am. Um, so be careful. Stay safe. All I can do is warn y'all. Oh, today we're going to be using the uh, Everyday Witch Tarot for the reading, for the main reading. And we're going to be using the um, Wild Unknown... What is it called again? The Wild Unknown. Oh, oh, the archetypes. <laughs> okay, the Wild Unknown archetypes by Kim Kranz, and the um, Santa Muerte Tarot, the mini one for um, clarification. So, thank you so much to those of you <clears throat> who, if you're not sending stars. You're commenting, you're reacting, you're sharing my posts. Especially those who subscribe to the monthly membership. You guys let me know that you really appreciate my time and energy. And I appreciate you for your support. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. What is the theme for today's collective? And please forgive my allergies. I know some of you get irritated, but I can't help it. It's not like I want to have them. It's more irritating for me, I promise you. Okay. <laughs> Some people were making comments like, if you wouldn't sneeze and sniffle so much, I would understand this reading. It just throws off the whole concentration. I'm like, well, guess what? I'm the reader. I'm not losing concentration. So <laughs> I guess it just matters if I lose concentration. The lover. Okay. Number 17. is the theme for this collective oh all right i got two more so i got the lover the threshold the animal okay <laughs> and then we've got the temple how interesting okay so let's see and we've got number 39 we've got number 17 oh, this one would be what 45 i think it's 45 and this one would be 19 okay so let's start with the temple number 39 Number 39. Where's it at? Here we go. Okay. So the temple is the sanctuary, the shrine, the altar. The ancient yogis saw the body itself as the temple. Every function and feature of it as an expression of divinity. Build a shrine with found materials. Don't spend any money, only time. Hmm. And then this one says, though indeed the temple travels with you, this card is interwoven with the pilgrim archetype. If you've been longing for a spiritual journey, book your tickets. Oh. Okay, so it says, when we think of the temple, we often envision an architectural structure in a far off land. We are quick to distance ourselves from the sacred, assuming we must expend much effort in order to arrive there. Yet the temple is a universal and omnipresent energy, accessible in the highest and lowest, richest and poorest of places. Visiting the temple might be as simple as stepping into the dappled light of the forest, slowly and sensuously kissing a lover, or closing your eyes to travel inward. This card is a call to re-examine what you pay homage to and what you reject. What do you spend your time worshipping? Your phone, money, material goods? What barriers do you draw between yourself and the sacred? Perhaps there is room on your altar for something new, something surprising. Offer it to the heavens. When light, reverence for all, life as sanctuary. When dark, idolatry, cults, strict spirituality. Huh. Okay. Now let's look at number 17, the lover. <laughs> all right, 
Let's see. The lover, the lover, the lover. This one is the heart, the beloved, the devoted. The lover archetype is present everywhere. Not just where conventional forms of pleasure and beauty are found. The lover's awe is unconditional. When you hold someone's gaze for several moments, you'll feel the lover within you awaken. It is common to seek the lover in another. The true gift is finding the lover in yourself. Pushing through the heart of the lover is gratitude. Pulsing through the heart of the lover is gratitude. The lover appreciates and experiences the world through the senses, reveling in beauty, song, art, music, sense, and sensuality. This energy awakens at the tip of our tongue when we taste the sweetness of honey, kiss a lover, or speak gentle words to a child. The lover lingers in foreplay, aroused not by the getting there, but by the slow merging of self and other. This energy is usually experienced for short periods of time, as in order to feel it, we must be fully present and awake. With no expectations or rules about what should be. Rather, the lover is in awe of what the world presents. Reveling in the glorious details, grateful to savor, savor every last drop of life's offerings. When light, connection, expansion, devotion, awe. When dark, indulgence, attachment, obsession. Oh, okay. <laughs> now let's look at number 45. <laughs> the threshold. This one is the door, the gate, the initiation. In Hindu mythology, Ganesh is the ultimate gatekeeper. Look to the great elephant god for support. Hecate, Janus, and Menshin are also watching over you. Okay. Um, crossing a threshold may not always be voluntary. Sometimes we are thrown across the boundary through circumstances far beyond our control. Either way, we cannot go back. And this card says, we cross thresholds continuously. Consciously and unconsciously, doorways, gates, and entryways grace our path on a daily basis. When this card arises, it signifies that the precipice you stand upon is not your typical one. However, you have arrived at the threshold of initiation, here to usher you into a new reality. It requires you to leave behind the you that you thought was so well formed. A new frontier calls. This is not easy work. Threshold initiation means a part of you will be lost in order to make space for what is next. A metaphorical death must occur. Some may not recognize you. You may struggle to recognize yourself. The ground seems to crumble as you free fall into your new reality. This is the liminal realm. One step, dear friend, just take that one necessary, necessary step towards the future that calls you. When light, growth, individuation, ease in the liminal. When dark, resisting, refusal to grow, barriers and boundaries. I've got the animal. Number 19. <laughs> the animal is the beast, the wild one, the she-wolf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Notice your resistance to the animal within. Where does it come from? What has it kept you from doing, wild one? It says the animal demands we get comfortable in our own skin. The minute you accept, express, and celebrate the physical body, you tap into animal energy. We are mammals. The hair on our chest and between our legs reminds us so. <laughs> we try hard to deny our unrefined animalistic nature. Yet through this archetype, we tap into power and direction. Activating the animal within means reawakening our relationship to nature in the most broad and embodied sense. Drinking from waterfalls, roaring at the moon, opening eyes underwater, eating berries from the vine. The life force of our planet begs us to set down the devices, the constraints, and the social constructs and remember the warm blood that pulses through our veins. The animal longs for breath, food, procreation, and physicality. It wants soil under our nails and starlight on our skin. If this all sounds terribly unsophisticated to you, take note that it is said that when Buddha became enlightened, he roared like a great lion. When light, vital, elemental, alive, dances. When dark, savagery, pent-up emotion, <laughs> lashing out. Okay. All right. So. I feel like just the way the cards, the combination that came out tells me that somebody here may be in love with someone else. 
and they're repressing it. So they're not following their natural instinct. They're at the threshold, but I feel like they're about to be thrown into thrown into a whole new reality, possibly. Let's see. Let's align these. Let's see what cards come out in the actual reading. Let's see. Tell us about today's collective. We've got the Nine of Cups. Nine of Swords. Hmm. If all the nines come out, yeah, talk about threshold energy. The lovers. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. Ooh, the devil. <laughs> okay, the devil. The seven of wands. Six of pentacles. The Eight of Swords, the Seven of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, Page of Cups, and the Knight of Wands. The Four of Wands, Judgment, the moon, four of swords, nine of wands, the world, ten of wands. <sighs> I feel like someone here with the four of wands energy. There's something that they want to celebrate. There's something that they want to. There's a milestone that they want to reach. With judgment here, though, they feel they don't do it because they feel like I'm not seeing things clearly. I'm probably, yeah. Cause you see how it's a black cat in the water. It's a black Panther. It's somebody who thinks that they are delusional. So they're passive. They're being passive. They're fighting it. But the world card, I'm telling you, it's getting heavy cause it's a cycle's meant to end. And so it's getting heavy for this person to continue. Yeah. To continue fighting this. And from what we can see, even in the oracle cards, someone is fighting their animal nature, the, the part of them that's primal, the one part of them that makes decisions out of instinct, out of intuition. They're fighting that. So, in the cards we've got, we start off with two nines. Of course, a cycle is finishing. A cycle is... The thing, okay, I have to talk about this. I don't know why I feel drawn to talk about this, but cycles are meant to end. They're not meant to be forever. Every time we start a cycle, it's because on that level of our journey, we're going to learn something. So for example, when we're little, we all go through cycles of going to the first level of school, right? At some point, that cycle ends and we go to the next level. Then that cycle ends and we go to the next level. We can't stay in a cycle forever. It's not meant to be that way. Even people who, um, let's say that they want to stay at a certain job forever. The natural progression is to grow. So if they start at entry level, at some point they want that cycle to end and they want to go to another level and, you know, eventually be a part of management or be a part of, you know, a better pay group. That's where we know whether something's meant for us or not. A cycle ends when we feel we're not growing anymore. It's not like it, it's reached a dead end. That means the cycle's over. <sighs> but some people misinterpret life and they think that cycles should continue forever. And I'm saying that because we've got somebody here who's at the precipice, at the threshold of the ending of a cycle. And they're really struggling. They're really struggling with it. There's something that they're drawn to. And with the lovers, this doesn't have to be a person because I don't even see people on the on the spread. 
It doesn't have to be a person. They're drawn to something else. And this could be, let's say they've been at, you know, a business run by a friend or family for so long. And they're drawn to starting their own company. Unfortunately, whatever they're drawn to, they see it like the devil. They see it like, no, that's bad. That's bad because... <sighs> The fact that the temple and the animal energy came out makes me think that this could have something to do with religion. So let's say that this is, um, I'm trying to think of a way to put it. Let's say that this is a same sex connection. Okay. It's either, let's say it's a Muslim woman or a, a Christian man, and they have been taught that being homosexual or being attracted to your same gender is an aberration against God and nature and all this shit. Maybe they're drawn to someone of the same sex, but they see it as bad. They see it like, no, 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 I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. They're defending against it. They feel like they can't possibly be drawn to that. They're judging themselves. They have this purity, purity mindset. But in reality, it's just their mind tricking them. With the Six of Pentacles here, this person wants to be seen as somebody who's a giver to the community, a giver to their family. So if pursuing whatever this is, or whoever it is, um, takes them away from their community, that's what's holding them back, not the fact that it's actually bad. With the Seven of Cups though, now they're they're stuck in their head, right? Clearly, we see that twice. Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords. However, that being said, that doesn't mean that they don't fantasize about this. They definitely do. It brings out the lover, the animal within them. Um, and it's kind of making it grow. Because I feel like they keep suppressing it because they think it's bad. But they can't control their thoughts. Their thoughts go towards this person. Possibly even their dreams go towards this person. Because over here we did see the Four of Swords. Somebody sleeping. They can't control their dreams. Their dreams go towards this person. It keeps feeding it. And it keeps... They're getting to the point where they feel like... Where I'm at... Where I'm at makes me feel really lonely. Because I want to be there. I'm hearing the song of Ariel. I want to be where the people are. <laughs> but it's not just, you know, all people. It's a certain people. It's a certain person. They want to... Both of these energies give a very celebratory energy. I don't know what it is, but they want to celebrate with this person. They want to rejoice with this person. Page of Cups. This could also be because this is friendship, right? So that's why I said it doesn't have to be romantic because this could be the fact, like, let's say that this is someone who's been raised um, with temple here. I feel like something is connected to religion and spirituality. So maybe somebody's here been raised that, you know, you have to do things the conservative way. And there's a lot of um, uh, fundamental religions out there right like muslim christianity um there's there's multiple i can't even think right now but something about this person's belief may interfere with their desire to be an artist and they know that whoever they're their community is because I said I want to be where the people are maybe they want to go towards a community that would support them that would because we see groups people of people here they want to go towards a community that would support them in, in their artistic endeavors but they would need to face their inner demons first they would need to face their fears of why they're letting their family tell them what they should or shouldn't be doing or their culture or their you know religion whoever it is that has this this pull over them clarify four of wands <clears throat> let's see 
We've got the Five of Wands, Nine of Swords, the Moon again. I'm telling you. And look, Five of Cups. This person is very much in their feelings. Um, but... Guys, nobody can force us to stay in a certain place. Nobody. We choose where we want to be, especially when we're full-grown adults. We stay in places because we want to. Because our mind tells us there's no alternative. Our mind is tricky. You have to remember that our mind is geared towards survival. If our mind thinks that we are threatening our survival by going our own way, it's going to tell us it's a bad idea. Because the mind is like, we're safe here. But the mind, the primal mind, can also be a little caveman-like. It's not very creative. It doesn't go towards things that are beautiful or, you know, um, spiritual. It focuses on safety. We're the ones that have to decide we're going to go towards something creative or spiritual. So this person is in this place of thinking that if they go towards the celebratory energy, they're going to be lighting a spark. And they really struggle. Nine of swords twice. <clears throat> because they feel like, no, you know what? I'm not even seeing things clearly. It could be that when I when I do that, everything goes wrong. Everything goes sideways. They're a pessimist. This is somebody who struggles with anxiety. and They don't mean to be. Nobody wants to be an anxious little thing. But they are. They're an anxious little thing. Clarify Nine of Cups. King of Cups. Knight of Cups. Clarify Nine of Cups. Wow. Page of Cups. The nine, Knight of Wands. Look, whatever it is that they want to do, it activates every level of them. It activates their inner child, <clears throat> their creative inner child. It activates their their rose-colored glasses, lover self. It activates their deep, deep love. But it also activates the part of them that wants to escape because this is too much. Because feeling all these things makes them want to face their demons. And they may drink it away. That king of cups sitting there with that big old goblet. This could be somebody who suppresses their emotions through alcohol or through weed or through pills or through something. <clears throat> oh, Lord. I did not want to think of this song, but it's connected, obviously, because I wasn't thinking of this song. It just came up. Um, the one from Kid Rock and Sheryl Crow picture. Oh, Lord. Now I gotta go get it. Hold on. Because not everybody knows the lyrics to that song. Let's see. okay so for those of you who don't know this is how the song goes living my life in a slow hell different gut girl every night at the hotel wow <laughs> i ain't seen the sunshine in three damn days been fueling up on cocaine and whiskey i wish i had a good girl to miss me lord i wonder if i'll ever change my ways i put your picture away sat down and cried today I can't look at you while I'm lying next to her. I put your picture away, sat down and cried today. <clears throat> I can't look at you while I'm lying next to home, next to her. So, oh, it says, I called you last night in the hotel. Everyone knows, but they won't tell. But their half-hearted smiles tell me something just ain't right. I've been waiting on you for a long time, fueling up on heartaches and cheap wine. I ain't heard from you in three damn nights. 
So, yeah, this person is, I'm not saying everybody's doing cocaine, <laughs> okay, but something is being done here to drown out this, this emotion, this animalistic desire for someone, the, the lover within. They're drowning it, the lover within. Let's look at the Nine of Swords. The thing about this is, I just have to say this. To anybody watching this that resonates with that part, you can change the results of your life at any time by taking different action. That song always pissed me off because it's somebody who's sitting there, they're crying for someone, but they keep living their life in a dissolute way. They're, they're dissipating their gifts, their creativity, their energy. And yet they're upset that they don't have the person they want. You can't have it all like that. <laughs> that's not how life works. Clarify nine of swords. That's destructive. If you had the person you love around you while you're doing those things, you'd destroy their life too. Clarify nine of swords. The chariot, page of wands. Oh. I dropped one. And the Seven of Wands. Yep. I feel like if there was a connection between them and someone else, the other person had to end the connection. They had to defend themselves because they, they were like, I can't be into this person. This person's destructive. I have to keep going without them. Page of Wands, occasionally they may reach out or occasionally they may wonder what's going on with that person. But for the most part, Three of Wands, they focus on their future. They focus on staying away from whoever lives their life this way. <laughs> Clarify the lovers. Ace of Swords, the Hermit. And the Harvard. The Nine of Wands. Isn't this interesting? The Nine of Wands showed up down here too. And the Hierophant is making me think of religious energy. Because see, what's really ironic about religion, and I try not to talk about this often, but... This is one of the times where it applies. <sighs> Religion is very um, curious. It's curious to me. Because it's more based on how to build power for its leaders instead of actually helping the masses. They've learned to control the minds of the masses. But they don't actually help you live a better life. And this is proof. Because this means that somebody's priest, somebody's... Um, spiritual guide like they may have gone to confess to their priest or something like that and with the hermit here you see how the animals are eating up this hermit the priest is aware that this is eating someone up inside but it's almost like they are the ones reinforcing the idea that this is the devil they don't care if it's eating someone up inside so they may be telling them, that's why I said it's the difference between religion and spirituality. It could be that the person that this, that this um, king of cups is interested in is into spirituality. And the priest is filling their head with, that's the devil. Meanwhile, this person can drink their life away, snort coke. And the priest is like, yeah, we'll pray for you. That's okay. You can get over that. But don't, don't go towards this person. That's so confusing. <laughs> That is so confusing. That is not okay. That is... <sighs> Anything that, that sprouts up, they cut it down. Like, no, nope, no. Nope. Remember, remember, that's the devil. And don't you dare cross into the territory of the devil. 
the devil's just going to tempt you with money and sweets and it looks tempting but later on you you'd be your soul would be dead they don't care that this person's soul is dying now they're okay with you know abusing children they're okay with alcoholism they're okay with drugs they're okay with a lot of things not self-improvement though do you know how many posts i've come across saying shadow work is is demonic and i'm just sitting there like really really shadow work is demonic so improving yourself facing your shadows facing your personal demons facing your fears is demonic any person that refers to shadow work as demonic is stupid Carl Jung came up with shadow work. Carl Jung is the father, one of the fathers of psychology. That's like saying psychology is demonic. Like, are you, how? <laughs> I can't, don't even get me started. I'll go on this rant. Shadow work is not demonic. If you don't know what shadow work is, Google it. Jesus, clarify the devil. I need to keep going before I go off on this tangent. <laughs> Queen of Swords. Clarify Knight of Pentacles. Clarify the devil. And the tower. And the Eight of Swords. See, this Queen of Swords could be the Hierophant. This doesn't have to be a priest. This could be um, a mother, a grandmother. Queen of Swords could also be like a sibling. It's somebody that this person sees as an authority figure with the Hierophant. They see them as somebody of, um, somebody that they need to go to for guidance, for counseling, for wisdom. And this person is putting all these thoughts into their head to fight off what they perceive as this giant demon. They need to fight off the devil. The thing is that I don't think... First of all, I don't think we're dealing with the devil. I think that we're dealing with someone's fear, superstition, ignorance. And this Queen of Swords, the funny thing about this is that the Queen of Swords is not stupid. She's not superstitious or ignorant. She knows exactly what she's doing. She knows this is not the devil. But she knows that to keep this King of Cups away from whatever the devil represents... She's got to present this as a devil. Otherwise, this person would be on their way towards this. The tower is here, though. I don't think that they can stop it for long. Because I think the universe is like... Remember it said in the threshold, sometimes you're pushed. <laughs> you're thrown into a whole other place. I feel like the universe is doing this like, no, no, we're not going to do that. Clarify Seven of Wands. Not King of Wands. Look at that. Three of Pentacles. Clarify Seven of Wands. And the Three of Swords. Wow. The Ace of Cups. Oh, you know what song I'm hearing? Usher. Uh, you got it. You got it bad. Mm, let's see. Let's see what's Mr. Usher got to say. It says, when you feel it in your body, you found somebody who makes you change your ways like hanging with your crew. Said you act like you're ready, but you don't really know. And everything in your past, you want to let it go. I've been there, done it, humped around. After all, this is what I found. Nobody wants to be alone. If you're touched by the words in this song, then maybe you got it. You got it bad. When you're on the phone, hang up and you call right back. If you miss a day without your friend, your whole life's off track. No, you got it bad when you're stuck in the house. You don't want to have fun. It's all you think about. You got it bad when you're out with someone, but you keep thinking about somebody else. You got it bad. When you say that you love them and you really know everything that used to matter don't matter no more. Like money, all my cars, you can have it all back. Flowers, cards, and candy, I do it just because I'm said I'm fortunate to have you, girl. I want you to know I really adore you. All my people know who know what's going on. Look at your mate. Help me sing my song. Tell her I'm your man. You're my girl. I'm going to tell it to the whole wide world. Ladies, say I'm your girl. You're my man. Promise to love you the best I can. Um, yeah, I 
it just keeps going. So the energy I'm getting here, whoever this queen of swords is. So this could represent, because I did say priest, they could be like a nun, maybe like a, some a religious figure or a, a parent, a grandparent, a sibling. They're trying to keep this person. And this is why I'm like so angry right now. It's why it pisses me off because I can feel the energy. Whoever this Queen of Swords is, they would rather keep this King of Cups drinking, whoring, snorting stuff, smoking stuff, than have them go towards what they perceive as the devil because they would lose control. So in, in reality, the irony is they're trying to keep someone away from what they see as the devil when they are the devil because they're focused on control. They're focused on trying to keep this person in a certain lifestyle. But the thing about that is somebody done fucked around and fell in love. Ace of Cups. They fell in love. Three of Cups. And I think it's with someone that they see as a friend. Because remember, the song says um, one of the verses that they keep repeating is if you miss a day without your friend, your whole life's off track. So... I don't think they've even been in a relationship with this person. But the King of Wands, look at him. He's like, I know. I know where to go. I know where to go. They want to nurture this. They're starting to fight this control that's been put on them. Because they feel like they've stabbed this person in the back, the person that they love. And it's eating at them. It's literally eating them up. They want to fix it. They want to do something. They want to be generous towards this person. Clarify Six of Pentacles. This might be somebody who's lived their life as a player or somebody who's lived their life as a bachelor or something along those lines because they show up not as a young person. We've got King of Cups, King of Wands, but in some ways they are immature because they're letting someone else make decisions and choices for them. So in some areas of life, they're possibly older, maybe in their 40s, 50s, but mentally they're a teenager or in their young 20s because they're letting someone else make decisions for them clarify six of pentacles ten of swords clarify six of pentacles six of wands clarify six of pentacles and the fool wow so whoever this friend is wow santa muerte look at that Whoever this friend is, being around this person is transforming them. It's changing them. I don't know if they're still around this person or they were around. I feel like they were. They were. And it's this person, which we don't see who they are because the story isn't about them. It's about this person. But whoever this person is, is possibly telling them the error of their ways. Because with the Santa Muerte and the Ten of Swords here, it's like an ending. This person is ending because it's... Remember, the temple was like, what type of things do you worship? Money? <clears throat> uh, fame? What is it that you worship? I feel like somebody here with the Nine of Cups, the King of Cups, Nine of Cups, Page of Cups, they were in the energy of worshiping themselves, worshiping their desires, worshiping their indulgences. And somebody here encouraged that because it could maintain control over this person. And this one didn't realize it. But whoever the friend is, they're making them realize like, don't you want to be proud of yourself though? Don't you want to accomplish things? Don't you want to grow? Don't you want to do this? They gave, Six of Pentacles, they gave a lot of energy, a lot of food for thought. And with the Ten of Swords and the Santa Muerte, I love that the Ten of Swords here is pictured with all these blossoming, um, I forgot the flowers, what they're called. I think they're called Sempasuchil, but they're the flowers of the dead. But it represents that out of some ending, something new blossoms to life. So I feel like this person is changing their ways. Because remember, we start off with the picture, but now we're starting off, then we heard the, you got it bad. Someone doesn't want to go out anymore. Someone doesn't want to go party anymore. They don't want to do those things. But with the fool card, they they do feel like a fool. They feel like, I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't even know what I want anymore. Everything I used to want, I don't want it anymore. They're at a threshold. Clarify Eight of Swords. But see, the fool does take a leap through the threshold. 
page of swords clarify the eight of swords the seven of cups three of wands mm -hmm. <laughs> with the lovers oh lord i'm hearing i don't know i was hearing so many songs in this one um when the three of wands came out i'm just gonna look up the song so i'll have it ready but um so with the page of swords actually i'm gonna go ahead and say it because i feel like it's all all these cards are connected I feel like this this King of Cups was raised a mentality that was very narrow minded. It was very somebody raised them to be full of fear, to be full of superstition, to be full of, you know, be afraid of stepping outside certain lines. But whoever their friend is, they're transforming that page of swords. They're making them curious. They want to, they're opening their mind. Seven of cups, three of wands. They're starting to daydream. They're starting to think of all the possibilities, like their worldview is expanding. And the song I heard was um, A Whole New World. So let's see. It says, I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you, did you last let your heart decide? I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder, over sideways and under on a magic carpet ride. Okay, that sounds nasty. But <laughs> a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. No one telling us no or where to go or say we're only dreaming. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear that now I'm in a whole new world with you. Unbelievable sights, indescribable feelings, soaring, tumbling, freewheeling through an endless diamond sky. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. A hundred things, a hundred thousand things to see. Hold your breath. It gets better. I'm like a shooting star. I've come so far. I can't go back to where I used to be. A whole new world. Every turn is a prize with new horizons to pursue. Every moment, red letter. I'll chase them anywhere. There's time to spare. Let me share this whole new world with you. <clears throat> I feel like that has a double entendre. <laughs> so mr um fast and loose over here may want to teach this person things about you know love making they want to be a lover <laughs> they want to be an animal <laughs> but this other person is opening up their perspective concerning life concerning goals concerning maybe having an impact on the world and it's they're, they're feeling like, you see how in this lovers, they've got a key to unlock a heart. They feel like this person was uniquely created to open up their heart. Nobody could have made them change. Because remember, this is somebody who, who had the picture song. They had the You Got It Bad song. This is somebody who's been a player. They've been around. But something about the person that they met, look at this Ten of Cups. It made them feel, oh, it's a Queen of Pentacles. It made them feel this emotion they had never felt it before, which is called love, first of all. But second of all, it's true love because it's not lust, although lust is part of it. It's love because it makes them want to be a better person. It may, it's changing them fundamentally. It's not this temporary thing. It's not like trying to impress this person with money. They're realizing none of that matters to this person, which is why they're falling in love. They love how different this is, how unique this is, how refreshing it is. It's bringing them back to life. Because somebody who lives this type of lifestyle, they're dead inside. Let's be real. They're dead inside. And now that they're thinking of new things, they don't want that lifestyle anymore. That seems boring. Because it is. Clarify Seven of Cups. Players only succeed if they lie. The sun. Ace of Wands. And temperance. Eight of Cups. See? Remember, the Seven of Cups is about this, this whole new world, right? And here's the Seven of Cups again. Not only do they dream of this devil that supposedly is the forbidden fruit. They dream of it. They daydream of it. But they also dream of all the possibilities. 
what would life be like living with this person what would what could they do in this world and it makes them so happy look at them breaking out the guitar singing uh the sunflowers are blossoming it's like it it makes their whole world their heart just blossom to think of the things that they could accomplish together and it's lighting up this fire in them that's why i said i don't care who this person is i don't think that they can hold them for long because the temperance maybe before they were scared of the devil they let themselves be you know influenced by superstition and fear and all these things but with temperance it's like something is shifting within them something fundamental is shifting within them they're starting to come to terms with the fact that maybe they used to think commitment was boring maybe they used to think that partnership marriage oh that was so boring i'd rather live the life of you know the don juan the enamorado the lover but they're starting to realize this is boring actually because they're not building anything they're not getting anywhere with it whoever this person is opened up their eyes to the idea that if you have the right partner you can conquer the world and now that's that's starting to be really like they want to go towards that they want to leave everything else behind clarify five of pentacles the hanged man clarify five of pentacles Six of Pentacles, clarify the Pentacles. We've got the world and a Ten of Wands. Mm -hmm. I told you. Look at that Three of Cups again. <sighs> this is a friend. I don't know what type of friend. Like, I don't know if it's same sex. I don't know if it's, you know, uh, opposite sex. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Because ultimately, what's happening is that they miss their friend. They miss the, the fact that this person would open up their mind would you know mentally stimulate them emotionally stimulate them sexually stimulate them like they miss it all i don't they don't have to be sexually connected but they really really miss this person the only way that they can stay where they're at now is by disconnecting from themselves but that itself is causing a lot of pain because you're not supposed to stay detached forever but the six of pentacles they want like they feel like this person gave a lot to me i want to i want to give a lot to them I want to, they opened up my mind. I want to return the favor. I want to learn something. I want to be smart enough to where I teach that person things about life. So it's like they're starting to get into this kick of like, I want to travel the world. I want to, like they want to do things that this person has never experienced because now they want to come back and pour into them. So this, this idea of staying where they're at forever because this person that's what they want it's starting to get real heavy they're starting to feel really like this is boring i'm not growing i don't feel happy here i don't want to be here like it's it's really fucking with them now they're at a threshold clarify three of cups ten of cups king of swords and the two of cups but the Knight of Swords, look, I feel like we've we've got us somebody who has the potential for an emperor. King of Cups, King of Wands, King of Swords. The only king we're missing is the King of Pentacles. But see, that could be what they're willing, what they're meant to learn. Maybe they're meant to learn how to invest, how to be stable, how to show commitment. Um, and whoever this friend is, this is the person that made them feel this possibility they feel they feel so happy every time they think about this they feel so happy this is somebody that they see their friend as smarter than the person that they see as an authority that's where the the authority is slipping it's slipping because whoever this person is they've been very um strategic in how they fill this person with fear and rules and this is how you do things this person is very direct they're very direct and they they make them start questioning all of this bullshit they make them question everything but this makes them happy because this is making them grow and you know what as humans we're made to want to grow we're made to want to develop so although this person may be blunt sometimes they like that they love that actually look at that they feel like this person has their heart wrapped around their hand wrapped around their heart remember the song says i really adore you <laughs> they really do 
And the fact that they don't say anything, the fact that they're over here holding back, it feels like they're swallowing a sword. It hurts. It hurts to hold back. Clarify Page of Cups. Two of Swords. Clarify the Page of Cups. The Wheel of Fortune and the Four of Swords reversed. Oh, oh, oh is somebody speaking up? I've got the Eight of Wands here with the Magician. Two of Swords. So I feel like this person for a long time was like, should I say something? Should I not? Should I say something? Should I not? Specifically with the Two of Swords, they know that they have to cut something out. If they go towards this person, they're going to defy whoever this is and they might lose that link. But if they don't, then it's going to cut this other link. The one that really hurts to be away from. The Wheel of Fortune, I think that they're, they're stepping up because the Four of Swords upright... And this one is somebody repressing, bearing their emotions, but it came out reversed. They don't want to do that no more. And we've got six swords overall. They want to move towards this person. They feel like destiny is just pulling them in this place. They want to speak up. They want to possibly offer an apology. They're facing their fears. They're facing their demons. They're facing this person <laughs> whom they might see as the devil. Clarify Knight of Wands. But I will say this. I feel like a piece of them is saying, if this person is the devil, why do I see why do I feel so peaceful around them? Why is it that around them I feel like I'm growing? And why is it that around the supposedly pure people I feel stagnant? I feel crushed. I feel like it's a dead end. That's exactly what you should be asking yourself. Clarify that of once. Oh, oh no, I dropped one. Hold on. Okay, got it. Eight of Pentacles. Clarify Knight of Wands. Five of Cups. And Judgment. The Queen of Wands. So, the person they're going to towards, they see as a Queen of Wands. They see as very attractive. Ooh, the star. Yeah, not only attractive, but everything they've ever wanted. With the Eight of Pentacles, this is someone that they really want to put effort into. They don't just want to put effort into them. With the Eight of Pentacles, it's something you do every day. Well, maybe maybe they want to do it every day. I don't know. <laughs> but I did see it being as a friendship, although there's, there's definitely lust there. Um, they want to be connected to her every day. This is the person that they want to hear their voice every day. They want to be near them. Um, with the five of cups, because without that, it's like, yeah, remember one day without your friend, whole life's off track. So they feel like they, they haven't been right. <laughs> they have not been right ever since they have not been near this person. So they're making a decision. They don't realize that their spirit team is the one supporting them in this. They're making a decision of like, I've got to, I've got to do something. I can't stay here. I can't, I can't, this is killing me. So, um, I feel like somebody's making a decision to make a move. Mm -mm -mm. let's see because i feel like right now they're not gonna make a move right now is the time where they're making the decision to make the move because the decision itself afterwards comes action it's the decision that matters because once you make a decision <clears throat> once you decide that something is yours or you want to do something everything else just flows <sighs> So let's see. Let's see what happens. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I look forward to feedback as usual. Please remember to react, comment, send stars, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.